course record with Michael Breed on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Back on course record, Michael Breed joined by Gino Ariema, the UConn women's basketball coach, 11 national championships to his credit. Now you got a big one ahead of you. March Madness is officially underway. Coach, you get Paige back. The, the team is looking good. Give me an idea of, of what is going to, what is in front of you during this March Madness time frame? Um, well, first, it's great to be on. Uh, there's a, a lot of excitement this time of year, as you know, uh, both in the golf world and the basketball yep. world. I mean, this is, this is a great time. Um, for, 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 for March Madness, it's, uh, it's three weekends, it, three little tournaments, so you got uh, two games you got to win this coming weekend, two the following weekend, and then two the following weekend. So it happens really fast. And uh, the, the interesting thing is you don't know who you're playing. We didn't find out who we were playing until last night. So we know we got Mercer in the first round, and then uh, we got the winner of Florida and Central Florida in the second round. And then beyond that, you know, you have no idea, uh, you know, and, and – it's kind of exciting that way. You don't know uh, who your opponent is, and uh, uh, you just try to get ready for everything. And you just try to, you know, you just try to get yourself ready. You know, you don't worry about who you might play, who you might not play. Uh, it's nerve-wracking, but at the same time, you know, this is what you wait for from October to today. Is it different? Is the mindset different from the the regular season to these three mini tournaments that you talk about? Is it a different mindset or is it imperative to kind of stay focused on the same things that you've been working on all year long? Um, I, I would think, you know, for all the golf fans out there listening, I would think it's, it's maybe equivalent to, you know, guy plays on tour all summer long, you know, but then all of a sudden, you know, he's got a week to prepare for the U.S. Open. Well, all of a sudden, you know, I don't know if the mindset is the same uh, preparing that week that you would for something else. Ninety percent of it is the same. Yeah, you've got to go through the same routine. You've got a checklist of things you got to do. But, you know, no matter how much you try not to worry about it, <laughs> this means a lot more. it's a lot more pressure. It's a lot more. Every little mistake is magnified, you know, so. Yeah, there's, there's, you, you've got to understand the pressure of it. You got to understand the bigness of it. And at the same time, if you in your own mind make it too big, it's going to paralyze you a little bit. So it's, uh, it's a delicate balance there that you're trying to handle. I, I want to ask you a question because you bring up that it, you make that that relationship of, of basketball to golf, and it's something we talk about all all the time, which is. Are great putters made or great putters born? I ask you this question about athletes. Are great athletes made or are great athletes born? You know, that's the age old question. And I think, I think over my years, I think they're born. They're born with a certain DNA, you know, uh, Hey, look, we, we're all descendants of, you know, if you, whatever you want to believe, but there's, let's put it this way. There's a reason why when you go to, let's say the horse sales in Kentucky, a particular horse from a particular parent or grandparent sells for a lot more than that. Now that doesn't mean that that other horse can't win, but the percentages are that when they're born, they have that championship DNA already in them. So what has to happen then is the right coaching, the right drive, the right, but the reason they're a champion is because they were born that way. And then they had all those other things. They had the drive, they had the coaching, they had the, the ability to maximize, but yeah, you don't, you don't just say, Hey, I want to become Ben <laughs> Crenshaw. Or I, I want to become tiger as a putter. Now, nah, I think I don't care if you spend, 15 hours a day with you on the putting green teaching them it ain't gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you another question here coach because i'm curious to find this out um I, I was asked this question a long time ago as a as a kid how 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 much do you think um the mind plays into the great athlete and i at a young age 18 19 years of age 
it, it, I, I said nothing. It's all physical, no mental in this. As I've gotten older and as I've started to coach uh, and, and then coaching great players and watching them ascend, the, the mind is what it basically becomes. I mean, there's a physical makeup, but there's a mental part of it that is enormous in that sort of transcending or making that next jump from good to great. Do you find that to be the case as well? 100%, Michael, 100%. You, you take, uh, again, you take every guy on the PGA Tour, you take every lady on the LPGA Tour, doesn't matter. You take every guy in the NBA, I would say 90% of them have every shot, can execute every single thing that's required to execute. But, you know, just like, you know, basketball is a game of when to, not how to. Everybody knows how to shoot. Everybody knows how to pass. You know, everybody knows how to play defense. And then, God, every guy on the tour, you know, every every – low handicapper everybody knows how to hit this shot everybody knows how to get the ball on the green everybody knows how to make a putt how to read a putt that's how you got to be a low handicapper however not everybody knows how to deal with i gotta make this I, i'll give you a quick friends i got kids on my team that will say okay as a team let's just make 12 and sometimes i'll say let's make 12 in a row what 15 footers, bank shots, shots that seventh graders can make. And you got kids that win their number one, two, three, four, five in line. Bang, 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 bang. They make them all. When they get to be, uh oh, we've already made nine in a row. Now, this kid's number 10 or 11, it ain't going in because that kid's scared, scared to death to miss. And that's why you, you know, you go, I, I, I don't want that kid touching the ball at the end of the game. So it's the same thing on tour. There's a reason why some guys consistently contend in majors and other guys don't. All right, I got to ask you this now because I know you love golf. You and I have a good friendship uh, based around golf. I want to ask you, when you're out on the golf course, you, you, you sit on the bench, you're coaching your team, you know the right play, <laughs> you know the thing to do. What kind of a coach are you to yourself when you're on the golf course? Would you give yourself, like, are you a good coach and are you a good student when you're out there? I would say I would say I'm one of those guys that's willing to spend eight hours by myself trying to learn a particular skill. Like I could spend eight hours at Hartford Golf Club in the practice area with twenty five buckets of balls trying to get my wedges from fifty yards and in exactly the way I want them to go. Not because of what I want to see physically, but it's because I want to get my mind to the point where when I have to hit that shot when I'm playing, I'm not thinking about the shot. I'm just executing the shot. So I coach myself to do that. Am I a good student? Yeah, I love to be coached. Here's the problem. When I get out on the course, all that crap goes in the toilet because I revert right back to where my mind is. So it's not I can't execute the shot. It's my mind gets in the way. So, yeah, we go back to the mind thing. I love being coached. I love practice. I love grinding it out. But the only reason I'm doing it is that I don't have to think about it when I'm actually playing. And that, to me, is what real practice is getting you so you don't think about it you just execute it you just react how's i gotta ask you this question then i know you're coming out of the winter i know that that you're you're thinking about golf all the time you're hitting chips oh, yeah. down the hallway oh, yeah. um tell me about the goals are you a, as, as a coach are you a are, are you a goal setter for a team and to that end with your game are you a goal setter for your golf game um yeah, I, I think you're a goal setter as a coach. I think you want your players to to have something to achieve, to have something to shoot for. Absolutely. You know, you have goals. But I think more importantly, maybe the process is, is important. The, uh, the, the way you go about things every single day. So, uh, it, you know, if, I, if, I'm playing, if I'm playing golf and I'm getting a chance to play a lot, 
then, you know, my, my goals are different. My goals are, I should be getting better every time I play. I should be getting better every time I'm out there. I should be executing certain shots better today than I did last week. Now, if I'm not playing a lot, my goals are very, very realistic, you know? So I'm not one of these guys. Listen, when I was a really, when I was a low handicapper, my goals were if I shoot 78, 79, then you know what? I had a good day, not a great day, but I had a really good day. Now, if I shoot 82, 83, because I don't play that much, I, I feel like I've had a great day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you have to be realistic so that you can enjoy the game. I see a lot of really low handicappers. They're miserable when they play golf because you know what? Every bad shot they hit, they're thinking, oh, my God, there goes my score. Now I'm not going to shoot the number I had in mind, blah, 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 blah. And I, I was that guy at one time. And now, you know, I, I marvel, Michael. Here's the thing I marvel. I marvel at guys on the PGA Tour, ladies on the LPGA Tour. They hit a shot. The camera can't even – they can't even follow the ball. Yeah. It's so bad. It's off the planet. And that guy puts his club back and strolls down the fairway like, I just knocked it <laughs> stiff. And they walk up there because they know, I got this. And, I mean, to me, that is the ultimate, man. If you could ever get to that point where no matter what kind of shot you hit, you just walk down the fairway and go, I got this, dude. Have a conversation with somebody. And that, to me, is what golf is when it's fun. That's when golf is fun. And so when, you, when you're coaching your players, and I'm just curious as you go in here, because you have to have – Memory is an important thing to have, and it's also an important thing to let go of at times, right? You've got somebody that's a great shooter, and they're struggling a little bit. You've got to keep shooting through that. So as you now prepare your team for what will be three small tournaments, two, three weekends in a row, and hopefully you get to that third weekend, and hopefully for those of us that are UConn fans that we're pulling down the, the, the championship, yeah. but how do you get your, your players to play through that time where – they are missing shots, but they still have to have that confidence, and they may need to make a big shot towards the latter part of the game. Well, that's where you go. They're born and not made. Yeah. So, you know, you come out. Some kids, they make their first two. They're going to make the next 12. Some guys, they miss their first three. They're going to miss the next 30. And because you're, the, the, the mind starts to play games with them. So what are you trying to do in practice? What are you trying to do in practice with these kids? In practice, what you're trying to do is to put just enough pressure on every single shot that that kid just has to bear down and, and, and give it their best stroke, give it, make sure their feet are set, do everything right, and then say, hey, look, if it doesn't go in, the best ones go, I just missed two in a row. That means the next eight are going in because the percentages are on my side. So, again, it's it's being able to say, my feet are set, my stroke is right, I did everything right, the ball just didn't go in. I had a kid, Maya Moore, right? Yep. I had a kid, Maya Moore. She missed three shots in a row. She go, give me a new ball. She said it was the ball's ball, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like guys I knew on the tour, right? Every time I see them, they got a new set of clubs. I go, yo, what are you doing? He goes, no, nah, those things were not any good. <laughs> it's never their fault. Their confidence level is so high, you know, that they think something happened, man. You know, you watch them and they got, they hit a putt and they look and turn around and look at the caddy, look at the screen and go, that, that's not supposed to break that way. What's wrong with this goddamn green? You know, it's never their fault. It's never a bad putt. <laughs> oh, coach, you're the best. Thank you so much for coming on. Good luck over these next uh, three weeks. And you know, we'll be watching all the best, my friend. Hey, man, I can't wait to get together. Yeah, I can't wait either. Thank you so much. All right, man. All right, dude. See ya. See ya. Love getting that insight from Coach Ari Emma and obviously wish him the best of luck this week.